What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Today, we continue on through the story of our faith as told by the Augsburg Confession. Today, we are on the Lord's Supper. Stick around. So if theology is something you like, uh, and this channel is more than just practical theology like the Augsburg Confession or or liturgy or things like that, there's the Lutheran Lemonade podcast, which just kind of has fun with, with things. There's yeah, there's catechetical teaching. This I would consider catechetical teaching. There's in-home stuff like incense and home altars and prayers and 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 at-home worship. If that kind of thing interests you, then this might be a channel for you. You want to hit the subscribe button. You want to hit the notification bell. Stick around for a little bit. See if you like it. Tell a friend or whatever. And if you have any thoughts, you disagree with me, and I'm Lutheran, so I'm used to it, there's a comment section below. Feel free to drop me a line down there. So we're continuing on with the story of our faith as told by the Augsburg Confession. This is a declaration of faith made in the city of Augsburg, Germany in the 1520s uh, because uh, the emperor was trying to unite the Catholic Church against a Turkish threat. <coughs> Muslims. <coughs> and, sorry, I had something in my throat. <coughs> uh he wanted the Lutheran princes on his side. And the Lutheran princes said, well, what you call Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, under the, the abuses of the papacy, is not Catholicism, as in the one true Christian faith that, as I say in the beginning of every episode, has been once for all delivered to the saints. This is the one true Catholic faith. And they laid it out bullet point by bullet point. There is a God. We are not him because we are sinful. God sent his son to justify us. That we can't know of this son by natural means as we can God the Father, so he sends ministers to us, and he calls us church. That is, those who believe in Jesus Christ. And what is, where is the church? What is the church? It is where the word and the sacrament are rightly taught and administered. And into this church we have been baptized by water into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now we are to the point in the story of our faith where we have been washed and it's time for supper. Washed and ready for supper. That's basically the Christian life. You're washed and it's, it's time for supper. That's the Christian life. And we're going through it bullet point by bullet point because in the Lutheran tradition, when our youth are confirmed, when they are making their public declaration of faith, they are asked, would you rather die than fall away from this faith? And I think non-Lutherans going to their Lutheran family members' confirmation will go, oh, isn't that cute? They're asking them if they'd rather die than fall away from Christianity. That is not what we are asking them. Would you rather die? then fall away from this one true Catholic faith. Would you? I would rather die than have the doctrine of the Trinity taken away from me. I would rather die than have Jesus Christ and his act of obedience on the cross for me taken away. I would rather die than have my ministers taken away from me who give me this word. I would rather die than have the doctrine of the church where I'm fed by word and sacrament taken away from me. I would rather die than have someone ask me to deny my baptism. And I would rather die than have someone take away from me the doctrine of real presence in the Lord's Supper. So let's get into it. Augsburg Confession, Article 10. The Lord's Supper. Our churches teach that the body and blood of Christ are truly present and distributed to those who eat the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 10.16 They reject those who teach otherwise. That's it. That, that's, all, <laughs> that's all the Augsburg Confession says on the matter. Um, if you really want an in-depth study on this, I would start with Luther's small catechism. It breaks it down into a series of questions. What is the Lord's Supper? Where is this written? What benefits does this give? How does such eating and drinking give these benefits? And who receives the sacrament of the altar 
worthily. These are things that are worth looking into, and Luther's small catechism can be read for free at bookofconcord.org. Likewise, the Augsburg Confession or the entirety of the Book of Concord, the doctrine of Lutheran confessions, what we believe, what we teach, and what we confess. So what is the Lord's Supper? It is not a memorial meal. It is not snack time with Jesus. It is not a cracker and some welches. It is the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in, with, and under the bread and the wine given to us Christians to eat and to drink with a promise attached to it. Do this in remembrance of me, given and shed for the forgiveness of your sins, and that we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Now, there are three major doctrines on the Lord's Supper. In Roman Catholicism, there is transubstantiation. In mainline American Protestantism, there is symbolism. And the Lutherans, we hold to the doctrine of real presence. Now, transubstantiation and uh, consubstantiation, which Lutherans are often accused of, and I'm not going to talk about here, these doctrines come about from asking how. They, 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 the Roman Catholics don't doubt Jesus' words that this is his body and it is his blood, but they want to know how. And so they've come up with the doctrine of transubstantiation, that the bread and the wine are completely gone as elements, and it is only the body and blood of Christ. Well, that's not what Paul says in Corinthians, his constant interchanging of bread, body, and, and cup, blood. So we know it's bread and we know it's wine. But he, but he also holds to what Jesus says, that he delivers to us what he received. That on the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And we had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body. Faith takes Jesus at his words. So while the Roman Catholics do trust Jesus, that he, what he's telling the truth, they've got caught up in how and thus heresy that is transubstantiation has snuck in. On the other side, we have mainline American Protestantism that says it's just bread, it's just grape juice, and that's all the more it is. It's a memorial meal. It's a symbol. It's not a symbol. Jesus is not being figurative. You can't look at places where Jesus is obviously being figurative, where he says he's being figurative, and then look at a night like Monday, Thursday, where John records in his gospel, the disciples finally said, at least you're speaking clearly now and we can understand you. And then say, well, he was being figurative. Doesn't work that way. Estin, it's a Greek word, look it up, present, every time Jesus is quoted as saying, this is my body, this is my blood, Estin appears for double emphasis because you don't need is as a Greek word for it to translate over into any language. But they put it there on purpose for emphasis that Jesus was being literal. Now, Lutherans, we hold to the doctrine of real presence. We see bread, we taste wine, obviously, and Paul calls it bread and he calls it wine. So obviously that's what it is. But Jesus says it's his body and his blood. And so we believe that. Is it bread? Yes. Is it his body? Yes. Is it wine? Yes. Is it his blood? Yes. Do we know how? No. And that's what sets Lutheran doctrine apart from any other doctrine on the planet. We don't speculate how it is Jesus' body and blood. We simply trust Jesus' promise that it is his body and blood, and that when his word is spoken over those elements, and we eat and drink those elements, we have, by faith, everything that he promised, namely the forgiveness of sins. And where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Faith takes Jesus at his word. I would imagine when a Roman Catholic dies and goes to heaven, should they be asked about transubstantiation, they would say, we were just trying to explain how it was your body and blood. And Jesus would say, you just needed to believe it on faith. To I don't envy the evangelicals or the Protestants, because when they die and go to heaven, should they be asked, why did you say this is just a symbol? Well, we thought you were being figurative. Well, clearly I wasn't. But hypothetically, should a Lutheran die and go to heaven and Jesus challenges us and goes, what is this doctrine of real presence that you guys came up with? At least the Lutheran can look Jesus in the eye and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I was simply trying to take you at your word. Faith takes Jesus at his word. We don't dive into how it's the body and blood of Christ. We want to know what benefits it gives.
Christianity, historic biblical Christianity, historic true Catholicism, the faith once for all delivered to the saints, is a for you religion. That's what sets Christianity apart from any other religion on the world stage. That every other religion on the world stage is you have to and you might. Christianity is you can't, ergo, I have done for you. So Christianity is a for you religion. And baptism, for you. The Lord's Supper, for you. What benefits does it give? It is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for us poor, miserable sinners to eat and drink. And by faith clinging to the promise, we receive everything that it gives, namely forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. That is what the Lord's Supper is. And if that's what it is, then why are we not doing this every Sunday? I mean, my church does it every Sunday, but I've gone to churches that don't. Protestant churches once a month, once a year, I don't know. If this is the true body and blood of Christ, and it gives forgiveness of sins because he promises it does, why are you withholding it from your people? Or why would we, as God's people, want to sleep in on Sunday? We should run to the altar of the Lord, having counted our sins through the week, and run to the altar of the Lord to make confession of sins, to receive his absolution, and to taste and see that the Lord is truly good. I once had a, a chaplain that I served under in the army, a great man, Love the man to death, an independent Baptist. And he asked me once, how can Jesus, who has a finite human body, give of his body Sunday after Sunday after Sunday for thousands of years to millions and billions of Christians throughout time and space? Because he says he can, that's why. Because he's also God. See, this is the problem. On this side, well, it's just a symbol. It can't be the body and blood of Christ. Why not? He says it is. You're talking about a God who can speak all of creation into existence, but when he says, this is my body, this is my blood, clearly he's not telling the truth. This Jesus, who is God and man at the same time, after his resurrection, in his mortal human body, well, actually, immortal human body at that point, (laughs) appears just there he is and disappears he's gone breaks the bread with the disciples from the road to Emmaus gone somewhere else but he's man right I can't do that can you do that well to quote one of my favorite theologians from my college days that's why he's God because we can't do that is Jesus human absolutely 100% human he's also 100% God and if God says this is then it is and that's great comfort to you and to me. This is the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, under bread and wine given to you and to me to eat and drink for the forgiveness of our sins. Because God knows, as I've said a plethora of times already, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.